Hello, what's up guys? It's Preach and we're back again and this is the video a lot of you have been waiting for. It's the UI video. I know you've been asking for me. Well, here we go. This is the UI video. I'm going to split it into two parts. This first part is just going to be what are my add-ons, where did I get them from and so on. The second part is going to be a bit of a philosophy, a bit of a how to play similar to our clicking guide on what we should be looking for in a UI to make it work for us to get good results. Okay guys, character in the background is my warrior who is desperately looking forward to some transmogrification. And that's how we looked at the end of TBC, which was ultimately badass. I know he can't use his glaives, but still, that's how I like to look at my warrior and remember him. Let's jump straight into it, guys. Add-ons. This is my add-ons list. No tricks. Nothing else has been done here. This is exactly what I use. Auctionator. Don't worry about that for effective graphical UI. That's just an add-on to modify how I buy and sell things. Because I tried to maintain 10 characters who are all changing gear all the time, getting gems, enchants, and so on. It can get very expensive, as you can imagine. So I do and buy and sell a lot of things to make sure I've got enough money for that. That's all auctionate is for. Bag non forever. Bag non forever is just a simple add-on that puts all my bags together into one big, easy-to-use bag. Um, I just have a giant sack, if you'd like to have a little pun there. I can search through that as a search function to so look for a certain item that I might not be able to find. It works well with your bank as well. And it can split it into epic items, legendary items, whatever you wish. Bartender 4 is the add-on that I use for my buttons at the bottom of the screen. Okay, guys, my skills and abilities are all used by Bartender. I use Bartender 1 because I can quickly change the size of them. Really easy. I really, I've always had, I've had Bartender now since probably the Burning Crusade. Bartender has always been maintained and updated. It's really reliable. It also, for key bindings, it's dead easy. I can just click key bindings, mouse over a button, press the key binding, job done. It key binds it for me without having to go through that ridiculous Blizzard interface to key bind. Big Wigs is my boss mods for raiding. Uh, this is where all the countdowns and timers for bosses, things the bosses are about to do are told and announcements when people get certain debuffs, etc. Really nice, simple add-on. Maintained by high-end raiders, so I really recommend it. Either that or Deadly Boss Mods does essentially the same thing, guys. Bug Grabber, Bug Sack, and Error Monster. These turn, you, you might have realized this when you've installed some add-ons, is you get a, a box in the middle of your screen that says, Error, this add-on has tried to do something somewhere and nobody's happy with it and now you need to get your balls out and put them in a grinder. Don't do that. Get Bug Grabber, Bug Sack, Error Monster. All these do, things do is turn all those add-ons so you don't get any warning messages at all if add-ons aren't playing nicely. And it sticks them in a button on your, uh, your mini-map. You can right-click it later after a boss fight or whatever. Just check what the error was. It, is it something worth worrying about or is it not? You can ignore it. All it'll do is every time an error occurs, it'll just disappear into Bug Grabber or Bug Sack. It's not going to be a problem for you guys. It just keeps it out of your vision. There's nothing worse than doing a boss fight. I've encountered it and suddenly some error pops up on your screen as you're about to pull. Really is a pain in the ass. Button Facade Keith here. The add-on Button Facade standalone. The Keith is the modification I used because I downloaded it from there. We'll get into that later. Button Facade is a nice graphical skin that goes over your buttons. That's all. Gives it a nice polished extra feel. Chatter. Chatter is an add-on for my chat box, as you can imagine, with Chatter. All it does is it allows me to copy and paste links. So if I need to link a YouTube video or link, link a website to somebody, I can do that via Chatter with no problems at all. Blizzards aren't particularly great at allowing you to do that, especially not links that you can then copy back. So if someone sends me a link, I can just right-click it and copy it, etc., and paste things in myself. Really nice little add-on. That's all it's for, really. It does nothing other than that. Class timer. Class timer is the buff that you'll have seen on all my videos that tracks my dots and debuffs on the target and tracks my buffs on me. Okay. Why do I prefer class timer and what is the alternative? The alternative is ex uh, Forte Exorcist is what I recommend. If you're using a class like a Shadow Priest or an Affliction Warlock that needs to keep dots ticking constantly on various targets, use Forte Exorcist in my opinion. Uh, it, it's very, very good at tracking multi-target dots. And that allows you to up your DPS by monitoring all the dots that you've got on various targets. If, like me, I play a Death Knight main, uh, I know if my uh, debuffs are on every target. Because if they're not on my main, then they're not on every other target. It's as simple as that. If they're not on my primary target, they're not going to be on anything else. So I only need to track one target for dots. Also, it allows me to add very quickly trinket procs. Uh, etc into my buffs so i can track when all my buffs are up which allows me to do better dps uh, you'll see if you check world of logs i got world 8th this week on balarok i'm quite happy with that world 8th isn't bad at all and um but that varies from class timer because i can see when my cool when my personally activated cooldown which is pillar of frost is ready to be up whether that be soul swap or anything like that or combustion for a mage i can use class timer to track when all my buffs are up so i can fire off that big cooldown and do a ton more damage Kombucta, not exactly sure what Kombucta does, I've got to be honest, and I'll explain why I don't exactly know what all my add-ons do later on. I'm not entirely sure what Kombucta does. 
got to be honest, I have conducted it. It's doing something. I don't know what it does. Uh, curse profile is what you get with the curse add-on updater. Uh, I generally have it disabled. I don't really like things running in the background, but it automatically reinstalls itself. So I generally just disable it. Air monster we spoke about already. Ghost Pulse I've switched off. That's ready for deleting. So don't worry about it. What Ghost Pulse does, if you've ever wondered, Ghost Pulse is the add-on that makes the ability flash on your screen when it's off cooldown. Uh, I don't particularly need that. I use something else to track that now. Um, I didn't like it in the first place. I don't like a busy screen. I like a nice, clean, easy-to-read screen. Grid. Grid is the add-on that tracks the raid. When you're in a raid or you're in a battleground or anything like that, your grid then pops up as if from nowhere, as if by magic, as if from wizardry. Grid, grid will appear, and it basically shows the raid frames as the character's class as a color. So paladins are pink, shamans are blue, so on and so forth. Roses are red, and we like to fuck too. You know, it'll get... But Grid will uh, then track any debuffs on that target. You can configure it to where your debuffs want to be. So well, if we take Sinestra, uh, we have this Rack debuff. Uh, we like to see what Rack's up to. You can configure Grid to actually change color on Rack So because Rack gets progressively worse the longer it ticks. You can change it so instead of having just the picture of Rack, which you might get on a Blizzard raid frame, with Grid we can actually say, well, this is a, a green rack, so that's okay. Yellow rack, we should probably think about dispelling it. Red rack, that guy's probably going to die. It just changes color. You can configure it to do a million different things. You can track hots, so where's your rejuves, if you're a resto druid, and so on and so forth. It's also very important for me, because as an ex-raid leader in main tank, I find it very hard not to track exactly what's going on in the raid. And because I have a combat res on my death knight, it's important for me to see who's dead. Are they in range? Because grid obviously changes color depending on the range of the target. Away, it'll go gray if they're out of range. Uh, and click them quickly and combat res them without having to search for people on the floor or anything like that. So if I see somebody dead, I can just click their plate on grid, cast my combat res, boom, they're up. KG panels is another skinning add-on, similar to what we saw before with button facade. It's just a nice graphical improvement to the bars that are already in place. A little bit of a graphical improvement, that's all it is. Magic runes, you'll see on my Death Knight, magic runes is an only extra add-on I use per class, because there are lots of add-ons that are for class-specific. Magic runes is the only one I use because my Death Knight is my main. Uh, it basically keeps a lovely track of my runes regenerating far better than the Blizzard UI or the Pitbull unit frames that we'll get to later. Magic runes is just so easy. It gives me a nice little cooldown so I can know exactly to the second when I can fire off that next obliterate and make sure I keep all my runes refreshing all the time. Mail opener is very, very simple. I don't know as it sounds. Because uh, you know, I do a lot of... Uh, buying and selling, as I said with auction aid, so I can get up with seven, eight hundred mails in my mailbox. Uh, mail opener, it works with postal, which we'll get to later. Mail opener just allows me to go to the mailbox, click open all, and I can go AFK for ten minutes while mail opener just sorts all my stuff out for me. That's basically it, guys. It just does it all for me. And what's better than doing stuff for you? Not doing it at all. Really is good. So we like mail opener just to do that. Mapster and simple mini map, which we'll get to later. These are in alphabetical order, of course. Mapster and simple minimap just allow me to alter my minimap. Uh, one, to make it square, so we can see slightly more than the, the circular map that is standard in the game. With it square, you do get to see a little bit more. And also change the size of it. I don't really need to see the map that big. Uh, the map is, is handy, but it's not awesome for me as a raider. I build my UI for DPS or tanking. I don't need to see the map all the time. So my map is nice and small. Carries all everything I need to see on it and makes it square so I can see that a little bit more if needed. Mixed scrolling bath text. This is the add-on that you'll see that shows my damage on the right hand side that I'm putting out and the healing on the left hand side. I've got to be honest, I didn't use this before we started making YouTube videos. We did some test videos that people watched uh, and they did quite literally said it'd be nice if we could see your damage and what abilities are doing what. So MSBT, mixed scrolling bath text is what we decided to go with. It's nice and lightweight. What you'll find is if you do, use a class that hits very, very fast like a rogue or a death knight is the natural blizzard damage that comes off the top of the head usually misses a lot of damage because it's trying to do the nice numbers and it doesn't want to clutter your screen so it actually loses a lot of the damage msbt stro strokes everything and if there is tons of damage going on at once but you're putting out it just gathers it together it'll say three or four hits total this amount of damage again i don't really look at it that is more for you guys um, I'm quite happy with the normal Blizzard one. I don't need to see my damage to know that I'm doing damage. I'm aware of the abilities that I'm doing and that how hard they should be hitting. But MSBT is there for you guys. And if you guys like to see your own damage, then that's what I'd recommend. It's nice and lightweight, not a lot of memory. Omni CC. What's Omni CC do? It's a cooldown count for everything. What do I use it for? This is the mod that allows me to have a timer 
on my abilities when I've used them. So let's say we've got Pillar of Frost as a Death Knight, Combustion as a Fire Mage, Vendetta as a Mutilate Rogue, and so on. Any of these big cooldowns, uh, you actually get a, a countdown number. So if it's a one minute cooldown, it'll start counting down from 59. This is better than the Blizzard one, which is just sort of grayed out rotation of a clock. Uh, Omni CC is an actual flat number. So I know I've got five, six seconds before my Pillar of Frost is off cooldown. I can then use class times to see what buffs I've got. Well, I haven't got any buffs off uh, on at the moment. Class time is telling me that. And I've got Pillar of Frost coming in five seconds. So I'm going to just wait probably six or seven seconds just to proc a few more buffs before I fire off my big cooldown and get as much DPS out as possible. Pitbull unit frames. Really easy, guys. This is the unit frames that I use that shows my character, my party, uh, my target, my target of target, my focus target, all those bars that you see that have got my health. Why do I like Pitbull? One, it's really easy to use. It comes with absolutely everything we need. Really is so handy, guys. Um, and it also allows me to move my uh, move my uh, unit frames down to the bottom. Because what I don't like about the Blizzard unit frames is it's up in the top left. It's out of your line of view, and sometimes it's actually quite difficult to track exactly what position your character's in. I need to just be looking at my screen all the time. I don't need to be looking around the screen. As we said in the clicking guide, focusing your attention on one particular part of the screen is very bad, and it's going to cause you a lot of problems. Um, so with this, we can move our unit frames down really simply get a nice graphical look at it so it actually looks nice and then we can track everything we're doing just by watching the screen postal as we said works with the mail opener power or is classic i just want to talk about very quickly uh, power or is classic allows you to add a debuff or buff to the game uh, so you can track it when it happens so if you get a debuff like a shadow word pain if someone shadow word pains you can set a power aura so it'll show a little icon of shadow word pain somewhere handy so you know you can get rid of it quartz is our cast bar buff Whatever I'm targeting and I want to see the cast, you'll see that on the bottom underneath my nameplates. That's Quartz in action. That's all that is. That's Quartz doing its business. Shows me the cast bar, allows me to stretch it, make it bigger, make it smaller. For my current target, I like that to be nice and big so I can see to interrupt it. Our buff is just the buffs in the top right hand corner that makes them nice and square. That's all our buff is. Uh, instead, easy. As it says in the description, fucking simple buffs. That's all it is. Shared media and simple minimap. We spots about them. Shared media is just additional files for graphics. Skada is my damage meter. Okay, guys, it's much more lightweight than recount. Doesn't use anywhere near as much memory and does basically the same thing. So Skada is my damage meter. And tidy plates and threat plates. I know a couple of you asked about this. This is the mod that puts the plates above the mobs that changes color. So if you're a tank, it'll pick up your spec. It'll understand you're a tank. So when you have aggro, those plates are nice and green and small. And if you lose aggro, it goes quite a bit bigger and red. So you can taunt that back. And again, if you DPS in. If the tank's got aggro on them, it'll stay green. And if you've got aggro on it, it'll go big and red so you know that there's a mob coming for you. Really nice. Take this color is just more graphical decisions. So I'll just show you very quickly these in action. Switch over to Xenadar, the big DK. Wait for that bad boy to log in. Okay, there we go. There's Pitbull. That's some unit frames. This is Magic, magic Runes, guys, where it shows my runes regenerating. This is Bartender, my nice small bars. This is Skada, the damage meter. This is our buffs, the simple buffs in the top right with little timers. There's your simple minimap. Just fire off an ability. This is class timer showing the buffs currently on me and the dots that are currently on my target. Here's MSBT showing my damage. This is Power Aura showing my killing machine proc. And you've got the damage meter there. And that's pretty much everything, guys. I'll just fire off a cooldown so you can see there's the timer from OmniCC showing the cooldown on that ability, okay? Last credit is I do not uh, I am not do not pretend to be or ever will be a mod expert. My mod uh, my UI comes directly from a website called wowinterface.com under the name Keith UI C I A C A I T H U I. Keith is a graphical designer who spent a long time designing graphically perfect UIs. This would take me months to do to create this UI with these colors, etc. Do not be under any illusion I did this myself. I haven't got time to do that and I want a nice UI. So what I recommend to you guys is one, go to wowinterface.com, browse through the packages people have put together, these really talented individuals, uh, pick one you like, download it, install it, and then do what I did, which cut away the fat. Uh, Keith is a very PvP oriented player. I deleted all that stuff, uh, Gladius, etc. I just didn't need it. And then add anything else in you need afterwards. But basically, go to wowinterface.com, guys. I can't recommend it enough. And just browse what people have done because there's some fantastic creations on there. Okay, guys? Full credit to Keith for designing the basic of my UI. That's everything, guys. I'll see you later.